And so I say welcome to everybody to my presentation about insertion into a hybrid data mosaic potassium iron battery cathode. My name is Daniela Söllinger. I'm a PhD student at the University of Salzburg. And today I want to show you some results of our working group. So, as all of you already know, batteries are well established energy storage devices, whereas the lithium ion battery is the most used battery type today. Due to the high consumption of lithium, especially due to the use of lithium ion batteries, which can be seen here through the blue bars, the demand of lithium increased in the last years. However, Lithium is listed as a critical material due to its low accessibility caused by the primary control of lithium reserves by a few countries. Therefore, alternatives to partially replace lithium as a main part in batteries are of great importance. One of these potential materials, oh sorry about that, um, is magnesium. Similar to lithium, magnesium exhibits a low standard potential versus the standard hydrogen electrode. It has a high specific capacity and a low ionic radius. A further advantage of magnesium compared to lithium is its higher balance and the earth's cross and those the easy access to it worldwide. However, it is more challenging to design reversible intercalation of magnesium ions in comparison to lithium ions because of the double charge. Therefore, the community search for materials which allow the intercalation of yeah, magnesium ions. One of these potential materials is hydride vanadium oxide. Hydride vanadium oxide is a layered automobile structure. Due to its open layered structure and intercalation of different ions like lithium or sodium, and also magnesium and zinc is in principle possible. Furthermore, it has a mixed valence state of vanadium 5 plus and 4 plus. Since vanadium in the oxidation state 5 plus is orange and vanadium in the oxidation state 4 plus is blue, the mixture of both oxidation states leads to a green color, which you can see here in this figure. This mixed valence state can further lead to a higher electrical conductivity in comparison to, for example, vanadium pentoxide, where vanadium is only present in the oxidation state 5 plus. And I write that vanadium oxide has a nanofiber morphology which is beneficial for the electrode-electrolyte interface. Previous research with hydride vanadium oxide already showed that the material is well established as cathode material in different battery types, such as zinc ion battery, in sodium ion battery, and of course also in lithium ion batteries. Different modifications of hydride vanadium oxide such as the addition of additives like reduced graphene oxide, the so-called chemical pre-dictation and pre-soliation, and the substitution of vanadium sites can further improve the electric chemical properties. Hydrated vanadium oxide as cathode material in a magnesium ion battery was first investigated by Tang and his working group. Thereby, they used a carbon pellet as count electrode and magnesium perchlorate and acetonitrile as electrolyte. With this setup, they reached a specific capacity of around 300 mA per gram, which shows that hydrated vanadium oxide is also a suitable cathode material in a magnesium ion battery. Another work of hydrated vanadium oxide in a magnesium ion battery was published around one year later by Rasko de Lamy and his working group. They achieved a specific capacity of around 220 mA per gram but only at the higher temperature of approximately 60 degrees Celsius. At room temperature, they only achieved a specific capacity of around 80 mA per gram, which is around four times lower than the specific capacity Tang and his working group received. If we further take a look on the cyclo time effect measurements, we see that we have a sluggish behavior for the CV of Vasco de Lame and his working group, and for Tang and his working group, the redox peaks are more or less in the same region. So the question is, how are these differences are possible if someone uses the same electrode materials and then hold the same setup? Hereby, Vasco de Lame mentioned that water may could have an influence on the system. This was so far not investigated. Therefore, a final proof and a detailed investigation of the question, how strong is the influence of the 
water content in the organic electrolyte, further insertion properties of magnesium 2 plus in high blood dipanidum oxide is missing. In our research, we focus now exactly on this question and to which, which extent the electrochemical and the structural properties are changed by the insertion of magnesium 2 plus. So in general, our setup is similar to the previous publications. We use sorry, high titled vanadium oxide as cathode material, a carbon pellet as counter electrode, and magnesium perchlorate and acetonic wheel as electrolyte. To investigate now the influence of the water in the system, we use three different amounts of water. The setup of our battery cell can further be seen here in this figure. So if we now take a look on the cyclovoltaic measurements, we see that they change with a higher amount of water. The lowest amount of water shows the brown CD curve here. With the higher amount of water, we reach the yellow CD. And the highest amount of water leads to the blue CV. So for the blue CV, we have the redox peaks at the same potential and minus 0.4 volt. And the maximum values of the current density are between minus 0.2 and 0.2 milliampere per milligram. This is similar to the results of Tang and his working group. If we further compare now the brown CV curve with the CV curve of Vasco de Lamy, we also see that they are really similar. So we have a sluggish behavior in the low area. If we further compare the Calvano static measurements of our hydrated vanadium oxide with the previous publications, we see that with the highest amount of water, we reach a specific capacity of around 300 milliampere per gram. And with the lowest, we reach approximately 70 milliampere per gram, so around four times lower than the specific capacity with water. This confirms the assumption of Vasco de Lamy that water led to the differences in the electrochemical properties. If we further take a look now on the capacity retention after 30 cycles, we see that for hydrated vanadium oxide without any water, the specific cap capacity is more or less constant during the charge and discharge process, but the capacity fading increases with a higher amount of water in the system. So the further question is, what exactly happens inside the structure with the higher amount of water? To address this topic, we will now focus on the setup with the lowest water content in the system, further called HVO2, and with the highest water content in the system, further called HVO water. Let me therefore show you our setup for the inner parandu XD measurements. Through inner parandu XD measurements, we are able to measure the structure simultaneously to the electrochemical discharge and charge process. This allows us to see how the structure changes through the intercalation of different ions by the use of different anode materials or different electrolytes. At the end, this should then hopefully lead to an improved understanding of the intercalation mechanism in the system. So the setup of the cell is similar to the normal battery cell, but a hole is needed for the incoming XRD beam. To ensure that our cell is still airtight, we need an optical window, which we can see here, and will be placed here during our measurements. So if we know our samples, we obtain a 2D plot of an inner Brando XRD pattern, and the refined lattice parameters of magnesium 2 plus inserted into HVO2. On the right side here, you can further see the specific capacity during the charge and discharge process. The bright area here corresponds to the background signal of the optical window, and the other lines show the break peak of our HBO structure. As you can see, during the whole charge and discharge process, the break peaks are more or less constant during the whole process, and so also the lattice parameters do not change a lot. The highest change can be seen when the battery is fully discharged. This is the region where the highest magnesium content is present in the structure. In this region, we see that the lattice parameter A and the unit cell volume show a decrease, whereas the lattice parameters B and C show an increase. Overall, however, 
you can also see here at the end of the table that these changes are really small. So for example, the change of the unit cell volume is only 0.4% during the whole charge and discharge process, which indicates a high stability during the charge and discharge process, which we could already see after 30 cycles. In contrast to that, the 2D plot of an inner ponder XD pattern and the refined lattice parameters of HBO water show a different picture. As you can see, for example, for the PREC peak 520, an almost abrupt change occurs during the discharge process. In the same area here for the lattice parameters, you can see that some lines here are yellow. This indicates a two-phase process which was not visible during the charge and discharge process of HBO2. So before the start of this two-phase process, here in this region, the insertion properties or the structural changes of HVO2 and HVO water are similar. So until a specific capacity of around 116 milliampere per gram or a magnesium content of approximately 0.6 magnesium 2 plus in the structure, we, sh we see that the lattice parameter A and the unit cell volume show a slightly decrease, whereas the lattice parameters B and C show a slightly increase. Up to this specific capacity, the intercalation of magnesium ions in HVO took place as a solid solution process. After this point, a two-phase process occurs approximately until the lattice parameter A reaches its minimum at approximately 0.8 magnesium 2 plus, which can also be seen here in this table. After this point, the lattice parameter A stabilizes again and we see a solid solution process. With a higher magnesium content in the structure, the lattice parameter base B starts to increase until it reaches its maximum until the end of the discharge process. So if we now compare the maximum change values of HVO2 and HVO water, we see that they change in the same direction, but with different magnitudes. So the lattice parameter A and the lattice parameters B and the uh, lattice parameter H shows a decrease, the lattice parameters B and C show an increase, and for example, the change of the unit cell volume is eight times higher, higher for HVO water in comparison to HVO2. This can also be seen here through the long-term stability tests. So we see a higher capacity fading of HVO water in comparison to HVO2 where we have more or less the same specific capacity during the whole 200 cycles. The reason for the higher capacity fading, of course, is that the structure gets more stressed during the extraction and expansion during the cycling process. So therefore, further research should be carried out to now combine the advantages of co-intercalation of magnesium with water for long-term stability tests by reducing this lattice briefing effect. To conclude, we showed that the electrochemical properties of hydride monadium oxide in a magnesium ion battery were improved by the addition of water, that the lattice parameter and the unit cell volume of HVO2 and HVO water change in the same direction, but with different magnitudes during the charge and discharge process, and that the initial specific capacity of around 300 milliampere per gram and the capacity retention of approximately 60% after 200 cycles of HVO water are comparable with hydride vanadium oxide without any modifications in a lithium ion battery. With this, I'm at the end of my presentation and I would like to thank the whole working group at my university and I also want to say thank you for your attention and if you have any qu uh, questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you.